Hey everyone, Kelly Link here, joined by Anna Prosser, Matt Mercer, and Chris Lindsay. Guys, how are you doing? How are you enjoying Seattle? And of course, the stream of Annihilation. Awesome. I mean, it's pretty great so far. Warmer than I expected Seattle to be from my previous oh, experience. Isn't it perfect? It's such a nice Seattle summer day. It's, it's nice. It's, it's kind Seattle of nice. summer in spring. Look, I live in Los Angeles. I come here for rain, guys. I need some water. <laughs> but no, it's been very cool. This whole stream's been fantastic. All the people that have been gathering. So for many it, people. It's pretty. Cool. I hope you guys are liking it. Yeah, I well, yeah, hope you guys are liking it, right? All right, so we're going to be talking about all things dice. Yes, because dice. what is a D&D &D player without their dice? There is no D&D &D player without dice. You must have dice. In fact, there's no role-playing games without dice. <laughs> if you have a role-playing game without dice, it's... It's acting. just a game. Well, <laughs> there is the Amber Dice's role-playing system. And, uh, anyway, yeah, sorry. Yeah, snort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, Dice Tens, really quickly, there is a special one for Tomb of Annihilation? There is. In fact, we're going to do a special release Dice Tin. Uh, it's going to have some fantastically jungle-colored dice on the inside, uh, seated nicely in, in foam. On the outside, it's going to be in a tin that has that familiar green devil face embossed in the top. It's nice. going to be gorgeous. And I think that comes out September 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. Okay, great. Nice. Well, now that we've gone that out of the way, <laughs> dice rituals. We all have them. What's, what's some habits you have? I, uh, oh man, I've, well, any person who generally gets into a role playing game at some point in their life begins to just collect dice obsessively over it the happens. years. Yeah. And I've, I've gone to the point now where I realized I have a good five or six large dice bags just filled <laughs> from like high school on. And so I've had to like hand pick various dice colors and themes based on which game I'm trying to run, what the theme is of it. Uh, for our for our main critical role stream, a lot of the dice that I have are all gifted by audience members and like people from the community. So I get to play with their dice, but every time I go down there, I get to scatter them onto my, my dice tray and then separate them by uh, the type of dice they are, sometimes color coloration, and I have my one this one kind of uh, shapeways. Uh, like underwater mine D20 that I use for my big important rolls that I have oh. segmented on its own corner of the dice tray <laughs> yeah. for those important rolls. So yeah, I not, like I didn't think about it, but that is totally a ritual that I do before every game. Yeah, wow. totally. It's uh, yeah, I, I don't know. All the dice, I, I, I like to have two or three sets of dice that I really rely on to roll as high as possible. In but, one game. Particularly when I'm DMing. And when those dice run out of mojo, as they most certainly always do, <laughs> I wait till my next major convention, yes. and I go and I buy new sets of dice. Then I put those dice in my bag, and I take my dice bag out, and I walk to the nearest garbage can, open it up, <gasps> no! and I watch as other gamers go, no! As I upended it into the garbage can. But where is your redemption arc for the dice, yeah, man? Give them an opportunity exactly. to like... I wave at them fondly as they fall <laughs> wow, between the cracks brutal. of the, the cold... There's some deep-seated darkness in here. <laughs> Ooh, I'm feeling a lot of emotion. They fail you once, and they're done. That's apparently. it. Wow. I kind of like this this idea of a dice purgatory now, where like all the oh, dice I that you've that tossed sure. away have kind of Toy Story Aww. style, like gathered together to one day overthrow like, you. The we'll, we'll Island see of what Misfit happens. Dice. I love it. That's yeah. great. Well, that, that's somewhere. next year's D and D storyline, by the way, is the Island of Misfit Dice. Look forward to that. <laughs> I kind of spoiled it early. I'm really sorry, Chris. It's all right. <laughs> Do you guys ever associate a certain set? Because, like you said, I have certain colors that go with certain, you know, games that I'm playing. But mm -hmm. even more so, when I choose dice, a lot of times I'm like, oh, that's like that's like Twitch purple. Okay, that's my Twitch dice. Like, oh, that's that's Miss Clicks blue. Okay, that's my Miss Clicks dice. And I associate them with other things in my life. So when mm -hmm. those when those dice fail, I'm like, wow. Twitch just not really serving me today, you know? Wow, <laughs> Twitch and I are like really, I so, I don't, do you guys ever associate you're, you're your dice with other things? actually placing the blame on, yeah. on uninvolved. I didn't realize until just now that I did that, but as we're discovering things about I liked our rituals. It. They're projection dice. They are. <laughs> I, does no one else do that? Am I the, apparently oh. the only one? I can't say I do that. The, uh, we do have uh, one player in our game, Laura Bailey, that is before every game, she takes all already 20s and then rolls each like five times to see what the no averages way. they are awesome. to test which ones are already like burning and rolling high and which ones are rolling low. I'm afraid to do that though, I feel like if I roll 20s on my d20, I'm You're wasting them. I, I, I do that every <laughs> time. She's exactly. like, no, I'm Wait. checking. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about running out of mojo, right? Already, yeah. Yeah. you don't want to do that. You can't. No. Yet, yet I can't get her to not do that. And then eventually, what if she rolls a d20 twice in a game and it just rolls poorly? She throws it into her dice jail. It used to be just like yeah. a sack on the side, but then a fan actually made her a big jail cell with like bars, <laughs> and she actually physically throws them into jail. And, and they sit there and she makes them think about what they've done probably for like two or three sessions and then eventually she'll give them another chance. Once again, the redemption arc. You it give will, them the opportunity. It's the important thing though that if you're putting them in jail, you take all the other dice and you line them up next to the jail <laughs> so they can watch 
What happens to that dice when it's in the jail? Can you guys please make dice stocks so we can shame them <laughs> oh in front of God. other dice too? Exactly. You right? can right? Right? Fall, you just stick them in there and they're like in the stock. Oh my God. Little tomato catapults, right? Oh my God. I think this is the next like TOA 10 you're going to be doing. i Zombie jungle themed, okay? Right, well you can take the dice. Okay, here's something we're doing with teenagers. If it failed you enough times, you take that dice and you put it in the freezer and you leave it there for several hours and then you bring it out and we took the head off of a sledgehammer and we would drop it from a distance onto the dice and watch it shatter. What? You have some sadistic dice rituals. These, I, I these not, go not deep. Fail. You had better dice than like small creatures, I guess, when you're in that age. <laughs> but, uh, but still, it's very pretty true. intense. Yeah. Very and true. again, you line all the other dice up so they can see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say the online dice shaming is pretty great. When that became a thing yes. uh, a yeah. couple years yes. ago, yes. the stories of how their character got mauled or destroyed mm -hmm. or ruined by some sort of bad role, and then just set it right there in the middle of the paper to think about <laughs> what it's done. Let the internet shame you. Yeah. How I'm, long do you guys put them in purgatory, though? How long do you shame them? I mean, I know yours are forever. one and done. <laughs> <laughs> He just like Superman like the dice zones punisher, them. Right? Yeah. Like a yeah. Skull and crossbone. <laughs> Kill that thing. Do you I... keep a picture of it to just slap in a wall somewhere just to remind remind you? Yeah, you know, you'd be a little tick right inside of your dice box. <laughs> Start marking them on the table you have. Oh my god. These like hard out markings of all the dice you've killed. That's well, right. you, on the opposite end, do you have a dice that you love and you cherish and you tuck into That's bed nice. every night? I wouldn't say I tuck it into bed, but I do have a set of dice that is this really ornate like hollow steel wound up thing that looks like it's come from some sort of alternate steampunk universe. That's really cool. I bring them out for special occasions only, and that's because they mark the heck of my yeah, table. <laughs> yeah. These are all super sharp, and if they fall on the floor, forget it. You're looking for that thing because nobody wants to step on that. Right. Yeah. What about if it falls on the floor, do you count the roll? No. No, no it has no, to be on the table. Roll on the table. Yeah. If it's an important roll, the DM sometimes for me will make you like have to keep that roll yeah. because that is what fate wanted. But I feel it's a slippery slope. It is, you're right. Yeah. It's a very slippery slope. Yeah. No, no. But I guess. On the table. I think it's your fault. Like, fate, you you didn't let fate talk by not aiming your dice properly. That's what yeah. I feel like. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I, I feel there is there is a level of intent that is important for a dice roll to have meaning. Okay. If you like, actually knocked it over, like, oh, that's a 20, it's mine, you're, you're gaming the system. But if you're like, this is my role, and then you release it with intent, yeah. and it's go, it was where it's supposed to, and yeah. stays there, then I think that, more than anything, is fate. Is that your startup? You go, and you, do you blow into your dice? I, I don't, but by many players have, I've seen when they have an important role on the I line. I do the prep shake. I like yeah. prepare oh, myself. I know, and why like, do we do that? Anything, I know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, everyone does, though. <laughs> I, this one, too, that you roll it. <laughs> Well, it prolongs the rolling process. It yeah. gives you a little more agency, I guess. I Let's the dice bouncing up. off your book. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't count. There's no like what? bounces. It, it bounces off the book. You keep the die roll. It stays in the thing. It's oh, yeah, always yeah. random. That's true. Right? Uh, People are like, okay. no, bounce off the thing. It can't possibly be a valid dice roll, but it's still random. Have you ever played pool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when we've, um, we had one d20 that for some odd reason I don't know if it was just chipped, but it could not roll consistently a non cocked die. It kept like finding some some imperfection in the wood huh. or something on, on, a, on a book cover where we began to believe that it was kind of haunted. Yeah. And so we, we just decided not to play with it anymore because it was frustrating anyway to have you constantly re-roll stuff, but then yeah. we genuinely began to build this weird kind of mythical narrative around its existence that it was slowly, dice. yeah, like cursing our other dice. Wow. Uh, I, we made it in 15. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, as people are watching us, maybe somebody's new to D and D. How crazy this sounds if you have never played D and D before. <laughs> because to yeah. me, all of this oh, is like, oh, totally. This is obvious. Yeah. But how long do you have to play? How many dice do you have to roll before this makes sense to you? you I, well, you know, it's and I would hate to compare it to this, but it's like a fidget spinner when you're playing D and D. I'm stacking my dice like I'm doing yeah. the, like the D sixes, and then it's a D twenty on top of that, and then I have to put my mm -hmm. like. For the record, nothing is worse than getting a nice, solid stack that you're proud of, and then like mm -hmm. it's your turn, and like, oh, yes, I have to roll that 20 now. Yep, <laughs> that's so true. It's the worst. I remember one of the, the first dice, I still have the first dice set that I ever got was from a, a red box that my mom bought at a garage sale when I was like 14. And this was the old school plastic, like bright orange, yes. jagged, super sharp, we, we called the D4 the Caltrop because it was just like this, this infinite, point of sharpness. I know exactly what you're talking about because I've stepped Concrete. on those. My pants. Yeah, you had, you had to get the crayon to fill in the numbers on <laughs> yes, it? Yes, yeah. you did. Oh, yep. I remember that. Oh, 
Man, what else is there from, like, I had a D100. That was the know. first set. Oh, the golf set. ball? Yes, the golf ball. <laughs> that was the first set the golf ball. in the dice purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I remember it fondly as it fell into the garbage can. Right, right now is where we smash cut to somewhere in the darkness where you see the dice emerge and go, but my time will come. <laughs> All right, I want to know your opinion, and this is a very weird thing, but on a D6, do you guys like the number or the dots? Because you think about it, D20s are all numbers, right? In fact, most of them are all numbers. But D6 is dots. I'm a numbers gal. Yeah? Numbers gal? Yeah. I'm I feel like dice are typically with dots, or so D6. So I want the set to be, like, you know, together. Uniform. So if there's yeah. numbers on all the, I mean, you're not going to put 20 dots on the, you know, <laughs> D20, right? So it's got to be numbers. OK. I will say I've actually gone in and replaced dice that have dots on them in other board games with numerical dice, because <laughs> it's right. just what I've gotten used to Exactly. Now. No, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. huh. I. I, this dice set that you're talking about that was really sharp. I actually have these in, these moments once in a while because I, when I started playing D&D, I started playing online. Mm -hmm. I, n I never played with dice for like the first year that I played Dungeons and Dragons. And so like a lot of these dice stories of old, old dice, I, I can't relate. I'm too much of a noob. And it was really weird for me to actually learn to play with dice because, you know, when you're using an online emulator, it's type in, you know, roll D8 and then it rolls it for you. So I remember the first time I had to go for a D8 and I was like, what does that one look like? And I had yeah. to like check, yeah. is there an eight on this one? You know, it was very you, you have to roll like proficiency, you have like a nine, or you have the hundred, and then you also have like mm -hmm. the lower number of it, right. like rolling mm -hmm. out of a hundred. It gets difficult. Dice are To be fair, confusing. I have players who have been playing their whole life and they're still like, wait, which one's the D10? Yeah, that, that's And I'm like, true. okay. What happens when the dice roller is broken though? Well, it, that never happened to me. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> then you gotta play with chits. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what is there a story here? Well, no, uh, well I was going to say on the, on the dice roll element too, because I, I, in a similar way, back <laughs> once again, back when the old internets first really kicked up, and you know, AOL chat rooms, you had r random number generators to role play back then. Um, you know, it was fun, but but there's nothing matches the tactile experience of like physically rolling a die and mm -hmm. letting it come to rest there. It's the same thing of the difference. Like, I, I mean, I love playing online. I do play online, but being with those people at that table, mm -hmm. like interacting with the environment, there is something special mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, and even, even like friends I know who play on Skype together or play on Roll20, they'll still like roll still independently the there and like move their webcam to show what they rolled in case anyone didn't, you know, the honor right. system didn't work out sure. or whatever. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, there's just, to me, it, 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 it's akin to, to old shamans or oracles, you know, throwing the bones or runes to see the future. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's ancient and tribal. I love it. And it's a really critical moment. Everybody's paying attention to the dice roll as it comes out of the thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's paying attention if you're like, <laughs> well, I mean, because I, sure. I play on Roll20 mostly as well, yeah, yeah. and, you know, they assure me, although I've accused them of favoritism and of giving me horrible <laughs> roles, they assure me that it's, like, the most effectively random generator of dice rolls that you could possibly have. And I've had a lot of people argue that it's actually more scientifically accurate randomness than dice, because dice could have a bubble in it, or it could have, you know... the I can see the, that, you know. the imperfections in it. But, I mean... And I've had someone even tell me recently, they're like, you want to play with the translucent dice that you can see through more than the solid ones. Because translucent dice, you could see if there was a bubble in it or something. So you would know they're more likely to be unflawed than solid code. Hmm. So there's a lot of science that goes into this. How important is that, That's, though? It's important. I remember there was these cool bone dice, but I couldn't actually use them in D&D &D because they were all impractical and like misshapen. But they looked so cool. But what if your dice is made out of meteorite and there are some out there? made of meteorite. Yes. No bubbles in meteorite, sorry. But there could be <laughs> weight differences, right? Differences in like the weight distribution throughout the D20. Theoretically it could, but that sounds like a level of physics and nerddom that I'm uncomfortable yeah, with. I've, I've had a lot of people in the community send us videos on how you can test your, your D20s, you uh -huh. know, balance and like, you know, water, a glass of water with salt uh, yeah. and different ways to find the buoyancy and see if it's like, people it's cool that it. exists yeah. and that's awesome for you. <laughs> I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference personally. But then you guys also have dice jail. So obviously there is some level some of... Some other people have dice jail. I don't. You I know. give them multiple chances. Dice jail. <laughs> Unlike some uh, people. Well, you know, in the freezer maybe. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, what do we... <laughs> this um, horror movie image now. You're opening your freezer. Really just scary. rows of frozen dice just locked in place. What are ice trays for anyway? Seriously. Actually, that's pretty great. <laughs> Wow. Oh, please just freeze. Could you freeze it yeah. into the... That yeah. would be such a good party trick. You'd just get a whole bunch of, of yeah. D20s, put them in someone's in drink. They can only water. use them once it melts. Yeah. 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 Anything else for drinks? Yeah. Can I get a double whiskey on the D20? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. 
I've seen fun. some D20 whiskey stones. And I saw like that, that too, too, actually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those are pretty sweet. It's a good time to be alive. When it, stuff that, like that exists. A, totally, right? I agree. <laughs> well, guys, how are you, uh, anything you're looking forward to for the Tomb of Annihilation and the Stream of Annihilation coming up before we toss it to the next segment? Oh, well, nah. Grung, Grung are on their way. I can't wait to see what happens. That's right. Oh, yeah. But you're actually staying here, so I'm not going to let you answer that question. Yes, Anna as on. well. But, guys, do not go anywhere. Of course, uh, we got coming up next, it is Matt Mercer, Joe, I'm going to say his name wrong, Joe M. and Dylan Sprouse to talk to you about the new season of Force Grey. So, yeah. guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 